Behaviors, behaviors, behaviors. When you hear the word behaviors as it relates to someone with dementia, do you think positive or do you think negative? Negative. 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 But why do we think negative? What you? I said that's what we're trained to look for. That's what we're trained to look for in the industry, and it also feeds into family caregiving as well. We often associate dementia with behaviors and all that's negative. But do y'all know the definition of behavior? The way you act, your response to stimuli. Do you know what stimuli is? Everything in your environment. Everybody in here has behaviors. You just did a behavior because you did like this. That's a behavior. You just moved and you shook your, that's a behavior. You're doing your finger like this. Like what time is it? That is a behavior. So this is the way we respond to stimuli. They respond to stimuli. And when I say they, people living with dementia respond to stimuli the same exact way we respond to stimuli. But because we don't have a label of dementia, it's accepted and it's okay. That should be the same way with everybody. Now, I think, I feel like Lori is giving me the side eye and saying, now Macy, now you know we have challenges. We do have challenges when we're providing care for someone with dementia as the disease progresses because of the way in which some respond to certain stimuli. But what I'd like to challenge you today is to better understand the reason behind the challenging responses, right? It's not dementia. Dementia is a condition. It should be cause of last resort. Now, there are some challenging responses, AKA behaviors, that are attributed to the disease process, but that's only after we've accommodated and conditioned for what some of the reasonable causes are, what some of the reasonable factors are. If you had a toothache, would you be pleasant? I'm just, look, she, she didn't even let me get finished. She was like, uh-uh, no, I'm not, so don't even try that. If I got a toothache, don't bother me. I get tension headaches. I mean, the doctor said they're migraine, but I believe in power of the tongue, you know, I'm country. So I call them tension headaches. If I have a tension headache, I got an immediate attitude because I'm focusing on the what? The pain. I don't have dementia, but I'm a person with headaches, just like they're a person living with dementia, right? Assess for pain and discomfort first to see if that's a cause of those challenging responses. Not only for pain and discomfort, one thing we typically overlook in the industry and as family caregivers, constipation. A lot of the medications that our seniors take cause constipation. If they're taking behavior health medications or some, some medication to address their psyche, a side effect is constipation. So you want to consider that. Has anybody in here ever been constipated? Well, don't tell your business, but I'm just saying we're human. Absolutely. I don't know why mama's so upset. I don't know why she's acting like that. I don't know why she's so aggressive. Is she in any pain? How am I supposed to know? Well, those are responses, right? How would you act if you were in pain? Check for constipation medication side effects and interactions. I think the pharmacist is the best thing since sliced bread. You can reach the pharmacist quicker than you can reach your doctor. Your pharmacist can do a medication reconciliation to see if the medications are interacting against one another. They can also tell you about the side effects. I've had uh, physicians prescribe medications to patients who were allergic to the medications. They're human, they make mistakes, but you wanna be sure that there are safeguards in place. When you have one pharmacy, you can have 15 different doctors. It's going into a central repository where one person can assess the medications and can have you on speed dial as a family member or a professional working with the patient and say, hey, I just want to draw your attention to this. This is what the doctor prescribed, but X, Y, Z. You can make that change and the pharmacist will be the one to assist you with that. 
dehydration, thirsty, hunger, does that cause behavioral challenges? They call it hangry. Has anybody in here ever been hangry? Yeah, right? You need a snicker bar. Y'all know they got some huge snicker bars these days. Those snicker bars are enormous. But you're focusing on the fact that you are hungry and that I'm the only person standing between you and dinner. You know? So you may have a little attitude. So if y'all start rolling your eyes up in your head, then I know it might be time to wrap this up. Urinary tract infections. These things can be treated. Bladder infections. Uh, the flu. COVID-19, a situation that can be addressed. These are physical causes of challenging, not behaviors, but challenging responses. There we go. Fatigue. You talked about that. You, you can't even function because you are so tired. Just lay down and close your eyes. I tell you, as soon as my head hit the bed, and I'll go to sleep with my glasses on because I think I'm watching TV. And then the next thing I know, I just feel them coming off my face. My husband will just take them off my face. I think that's just the sweetest. That is just so endearing. Sometimes I just go to sleep with them on just so he can come over and just take them off my face. Communication deficit. So we talk about those cognitive causes of challenging responses. Not understanding what you're saying. Not understanding how to respond. Lack of memory. Because, you know, a lot of times we present to them a situation where we think they should remember because we start the sentence off with what remember are you getting ready to sing um uh earth wind and fire do you remember hey <laughs> mom do you remember when no they don't just say it what it is and then they can chime in if they remember when you because when you say do you remember when you waiting on them to respond, aren't you? That's a lot of pressure when they don't. So they become frustrated. They, come, they become agitated the same way you would respond if somebody is asking you a question that they know you don't know the answer to. Does that frustrate you? And you look at them like, nah, you know better than to ask me that question. Now, you, look, you, when you put your hand on your Kim bone, is that like a thing? Is a Kim bone? Spell it, Lori. Spell Kim bone. I don't know if that's a word. I get that from my mom and them. Put their hand on the Kim bone. Right. You got attitude because you asking me something that, you know, I don't understand. <laughs> Sensory loss, to your point earlier, hearing loss, vision loss, loss of taste, loss of smell. In fact, dementia with Lewy bodies, data is supporting that that's one of the first senses to go or to be affected is olfactory. And so if they have issues or concerns smelling something, that could be an indication that they may be developing dementia with Lewy bodies. That's huge. You get frustrated if you start to have trouble with vision and hearing and smell and taste and touch. That's a huge thing. They're going to get frustrated as well. When we look at the emotional causes of challenging responses, aka behaviors, fear. Again, they have experience these signs and these symptoms 15 to 20 years before diagnosis or before anyone else has even noticed it. Anger, frustration, because they cannot do what they feel they should be able to do and what people around them are expecting them to do. I want my mom back. I want my husband back. They're still there. This is a new normal. It's a new experience. You know, and we have to look at it that way. It's a new. And so we enjoy new things. And so we have to really find that hope and that pleasurable and that sweet spot in this whole caregiving experience. We look at they need reassurance. They need comfort. They need to know that you're going to keep them safe without restricting them. They're depressed. They're lonely. The people around them play a huge part in addressing those areas to ensure that they can build them back up, building up their self-esteem, building up their, your, their happy place. And that comes through strategizing and preparing the environment. 